Hey guys, what's up? This is Levi here with Food Fight VFX, and today we've got another quick tutorial showing you guys how to use After Effects to tackle screen replacements in your compositing shots. So here we have an example of what we're talking about. The original shot here, as you guys can see, a little white transition to show you the end result, and that is of the tracked in screen replacement. Uh, now, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube and other platforms that show you guys step by step how to do this in a variety of different ways. Uh, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it. And I found great success doing it this way. I've gotten a lot of clients doing screen replacements using this method. And so I think it's perfect to show you guys in another tutorial a great way to make some money and get better results with doing screen replacements. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start by making a new composition with our original footage. And so here we have our clip. Now this isn't the original clip. What I did was I added in a zoom and I added in a little bit of a camera shake with the wiggle expression to give it some movement because I wanted this to be a more difficult shot to use as an example. So we have movement. This is going to be a, a rather difficult shot to work with when it comes to doing tracking. So we have our original plate here. I'm just going to call it clean plate. And we're going to use Mocha AE. This comes installed with After Effects. So we'll go to Boris FX Mocha and we'll choose Mocha AE and then we'll launch Mocha. Now there's a couple steps inside Mocha that we're going to be doing. But the first thing is we want to get a track of the TV itself. Now Mocha is a planar tracker, so it's great for tracking flat surfaces. Uh, things with planes like walls, buildings or screens in this example. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using. We're going to take our, our rectangular X spline and we're just going to make a quick square. And then we're just going to drag this up to the outer edge of the TV here. All four corners. Just like so. Perfect. And then we're going to make sure that we click perspective down here. And we're going to turn the minimum pixels used all the way up to 100%. And if I zoom out and click on the track forward button, you'll see that it starts to track to the TV. And it does a really great job here. The reason why I increased the minimum pixels used is because I wanted it to essentially grab on and use as much of the image data, the individual pixels from frame to frame throughout each of these frames. And so it does a really great job at holding onto the TV here, even with that percentage pushed up so high. So it's almost finished here. Excellent. We've got a nice track here of our TV. You see that it, it holds perfectly. I don't see it shifting or moving around any. And that's important because this is going to be what our content that we're putting on the TV is going to rely on. And so in order to set that up, we're going to show the planar surface by clicking on this button here. And this represents where the corners of the replacement footage that we're putting on the TV go. So it's going to corner pin the new content uh, based off the corners of this planar surface. And so I'll click the little magnifying, the show zoom windows here. And this is going to allow us to get nice and tight in here. I'm going to put these to the corners of this inside bezel here. So we're going to line that up for each of these corners. It's just a nice spot to check to position this. And the other important thing that I want to mention is you're going to want to make sure that the boundaries of this, whoop, having a hard time finding the edge. You want to make sure that the boundaries of this are inside the boundaries of your original track, because this outside track here is going to serve as a mask later on uh, for our outside bezel to cover back over the content. You guys will see what I mean by that. But if I scrub through here, you're going to see here that that stays tracked just perfectly. So we'll rename this from layer one. We'll name it TV track. You can name it whatever you like, but I'm going to just stick the TV track. The next step is we're going to want to create a mask around the edge of the screen. And the reason why we want to do this is because we're going to place the TV back over top of the content. So the content is going to stretch all the way to this edge of the blue planar surface. But we want to essentially have only the TV screen uh, carry that content. So we need to create a mask. So I'm going to click on the X blind layer here and we'll zoom in with the mouse scroll wheel. And we're just going to left click and go around the edge of this TV as close as we can and try to make those corners as smooth as possible. And we're just going to go around the edge, like I said, 
and draw this shape. And we can zoom in a little further on these tighter corners just to make sure that uh, we're good to go. And then zoom back out. All right, looking nice, almost finished. I usually fast forward through these points, but I want you guys to see this whole process. It's very fast. We're literally almost done with Moke already, and we'll move into the final compositing steps for this shot. Okay, once we're done, we will right click, and you're gonna see a planar surface for this track as well. We'll shut off the planar surface tool for the time being. And I'm going to select all of those points and I'm going to push them in, which will round them up a little bit for us, make it a little bit of a nicer track. And we can fix some of these a little bit, uh, but I think it's looking just fine. And the next step, we'll rename this from layer two, we'll name this screen track because we're just tracking the screen. We can actually use this link to track feature and link it to the TV track. So we don't actually have to have Mocha do the track for the screen. We can use the track and position data that we already gathered from the original track to drive the track for the TV screen. And that's all that we have to do. We've renamed these, we've linked the track, and we've got our planar tool set up for our corner pin data for the new content that we put in. So once you've done this, we can go ahead and close Mocha and make sure that we click Save. And this brings us back into After Effects. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to import the footage that we want to use for our TV track. And I'm only gonna use a portion of this footage. This is for perhaps a different tutorial that I'm kind of working on. We're going to, first of all, scale it up just to get rid of those black bars on the top and bottom. And then the last thing that we need to do is pre-compose this. And this is actually really neat. We're gonna right click, choose pre-compose. We'll name it TV content. Make sure that move all attributes into the new composition is selected and select OK. The reason I'm doing this and pre-composing it is actually kind of cool. Once we've got the TV content placed on our TV screen, if we want to change what's on that screen, we can just double click into this pre-comp, change the video that sits inside of it, and it'll automatically update in the other composition. So it's, it's kind of a neat feature that we can use to essentially create procedural effects. You know, we can very quickly just open the project, change a video file, and boom, the effect's already done. We don't have to do it all over again. So now let's go ahead and take that tracking data and apply it to this comp. We want to corner pin that, that this new content uh, to where those planar surface edges were. So we're gonna click on our clean plate footage, go to our effects controls panel, and under the Mocha AE uh, effect, we wanna drop tracking data down and choose create track data. And we're gonna make sure we choose TV track, which was that outer track that we did, and click OK. And right away, you're gonna see here, we've got uh, the corner pins set up. And if I zoom back in time on our playhead here, you're gonna see that they also zoom out. We'll choose corner pin to support motion blur for the export option. And for the layer that we're gonna to export to, we're gonna choose TV content, and we're gonna click apply export. And what you see is automatically it has corner pinned our content, if I click on our TV content here, we have a corner pin effect and it's keyframed to follow along with the corners of that planar surface that we got from Mocha. So now that that's done, we're gonna take our TV content layer and I'm gonna do something cool. I'm gonna right click, go to blending mode and click overlay. And what you see here is that overlays the video over top of the screen so that we still have all of those real neat reflections that we had in the original shot. So it's just a nice way of blending the new content onto the TV screen and having it look a little bit more realistic. But we have a problem. Uh, the edges of our new content go to the edge or in corners of where that uh, planar surface tool is. So this is where we did the screen track uh, to create a mask for that where we can essentially tell the content, hey, we don't want you going any further than the edges here. So to do that, we'll go to our clean plate, we'll duplicate it, and we'll move this copy to the very top, and we'll rename this screen mat. And you can name it whatever you like. It's just, you know, for reference, this is going to be a mat layer. And we'll solo this layer for the time being, 
and we'll go to the map drop down instead of the tracking data drop down and we'll click create AE masks. And what that does is it creates masks essentially, uh, first for the TV track and then second for the screen track. And so if we drop down our masks drop down for the screen mat layer, if we take our screen track and move it above the TV track, what we can do is say, hey, listen, if I turn these both to none, we want to subtract the screen track. So if I turn on our transparency grid here, you're gonna see it's now cut that out. But we also want to intersect the other one. And what this does is it creates the bezel all nice and cut out, which will cover over top of our content, which as you guys remember, goes to the inside corners. This is why I said you wanna make sure your the corners of your planar surface were inside of the track boundary. And now if I unsolo this, you're gonna see that that sits on top of the TV content. And so now we have our TV content being covered by the edges of this TV. If I solo it once more, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If I unsolo it, there we are. We've got the TV content. We've got the clean plate in the background. If I just kind of solo through these layers, you guys can see how these are layered on top of one another to give us that final result. And so if I hit the tilde key, to go full screen here and we can preview this out you see that we've got a really nice track the screen has got new content but wait i also mentioned that we can change that content fairly easy so i'll go to project and i'll import uh, another piece of footage here so i'll go to let's see screen replacement tutorial i've got this creative cow video if we double click on the tv content pre-comp that takes us inside of that composition we can now take and drop a new piece of footage in here and we can scale it up. And if I click back, now you guys see that content on the screen has been changed. It's that easy. We don't have to do the track over again. We don't have to do any of that. It automatically changes the content that is being uh, corner pinned for our TV here. So fairly simple to do, super, super easy. One last thing that we might consider is feathering the edge of this screen here. So if we go to the screen mat and we hit the MM key or hit M twice, that brings up all of our settings. And for this screen track, we can maybe feather the edge just a smidge, uh, just to soften it up a little bit. And there you have it. We've got the reflections. We've got the new content on the screen. It's all tracked in. It's uh, sitting inside the screen area, just like it's supposed to and everything's looking nice. One last thing that I did, you might not have this effect, but if we go to effect and we went to Red Giants VFX, actually it's gonna be in one of these other Red Giant effects, there's a VHS filter. And so if we want, we can go to the TV content, double click on it, take our footage, and I'll apply the VHS effect. And that just kind of uh, adds grain and you know all the static and these distortion lines and things like that onto the uh, footage for us. Any effect that you apply to these videos is also going to be applied to the TV content that we've put onto our screen. And this just gives you a better example based off the original that I showed you guys at the beginning of the tutorial. So that's it guys. As you see, it's fairly easy. Mocha AE comes with After Effects. You can very easily track flat surfaces like TVs you guys can create masks in Mocha and uh, use those to hide the edges of your content. You can even add effects to enhance the look like this VHS effect that we added should you guys have that plugin. Or you guys can create that effect yourself. There's tutorials online showing you guys how to add grain and all sorts of other stuff to your footage just to give it that extra bit of spice. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching the tutorial. If you guys liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, do all that kind of fun stuff. Share it to your friends. Put it on social media. Let everybody know that uh, you guys watched this tutorial. And give it a try yourself. Go out there. Get a piece of footage of your TV in the living room or your cell phone screen. Launch After Effects and Mocha. And give it a try yourself. I, I think that you guys will be very happy with the end results. You guys can get a lot of good clients. You guys can enhance your videos and things like that. For your own personal projects, there's really limitless options and things that you guys can do with uh, an effect like this. So once again, this is Levi with Food Fight VFX, and we'll see you at the next tutorial.